the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show with Billy the Kid and Scott Tang. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show! It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah! yeah. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah! yeah. Oh, we are filming from a live cubicle audience. Thank you to our participating family over there. We appreciate it. Tall Sean, um, Chad O'Hara, Bethany. We got Jake there, but I don't think Jake was participating. Dana just walked by and said, woohoo. Look how Jake's judging us right now. I can see it. I can't see. I'm sorry, Jake. I thought it was going to be a three-person show. <laughs> Come on over. Hop on in, guy. Um, so, all right. So yesterday we forgot to talk about Kanye uh, doing something for a dying uh, fan. So before we get into all of our stuff for today, we'll touch on that. So basically, fan passing like what? was uh, dying of cancer. What? So what, what, what happened? Is, she's going into a meeting. The of fashion course. police are going to. There goes our new segment. Hang on. Sorry, Can we run it back a little bit? Before I forget, I'm going to forget this. Here. I forgot who. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to like go ahead. Yeah, yeah, forget say it, say it, the Kanye West thing. Sangford, I don't even. It don't even matter anymore. It's over. Whatever. <laughs> Jeez. Whatever. It's old news. All right, but so anyways, the kid had cancer. She wanted to connect with Kanye. Kanye FaceTimed her up, talked to her, and rat for her a little bit. And I guess she passed away the other day. So he granted her a wish, which is great. Okay, so let's get this going. We, we haven't introduced ourselves since the start of this season. How do people even know who we are? Oh well, I'm Scott, <laughs> and I'm Bill, and this is the, the Bill and Scott, Scott Cubicle, Cubicle Show, Epi number one hundred and one. All right, there we go. Oh, oh, there, there she, she is. is. Wait a minute. Is it time for? Hey. The fashion. Oh, Wait, hang on. Oh. <laughs> Where's the mic? All right, so this is it's the fashion police where Stephanie is going to judge Bill's outfit and let us know if it's acceptable or not. Nah. So okay. stand on up, Bill. Show off your outfit. You don't like what? What about other than the zip-up? Oh, that's, well, that's from pulling my phone out of my pocket. You took the fashion out of your phone. So you gotta have your phone out of your pocket. On a scale of one to Bill, how Bill is he? Oh, well, this is the new Bill, so... I like the new Bill. There he is. This might be kind of loud. I don't know if that's drowning a sound. Oh, so okay. yeah, true. I forgot. When we're far away from... It's hard to hear. That's <laughs> well, yeah. All right, well, you got the approval today, so you're one for Thank one, you. Bill. There we go. All right. All right Thank so you, Fashion Police. Selena Stephanie. Gomez, she decided to delete her ex-lovers off of Instagram and a whole bunch of other people. Basically, she went on a whole deleting uh, spree. Everybody, she don't follow, like, The Weeknd. She don't follow Justin Bieber, her alleged new baby bae. Um, she follows 37 people. 11 of those are fan accounts. Um, the other 26... Are a bunch of other famous well, people and like certified like, brands. Well, the one person that you know helped her out with uh, giving her the liver transplant, obviously she's right, still her follows best, her. One of her best friends. If uh, Selena didn't follow her, I would say that's pretty we messed some... up right there. Like, why would you do this? So she's following thirty-seven people, which include like Apple and Puma and Time and Jessica Alba. But she did some notable people that she did unfollow was like Demi Lovato, but. On one of Demi's most recent pictures, she still commented on it and everything. So it's like she's still lurking, even though she's not following. What do you, is there a move? Is there a like a point behind this move? Is she doing a Taylor Swift style publicity stunt? Now Taylor Swift did the whole fire sale, like get rid of everything. Everything's got to go. Blow out. Deleted all her content. Selena Gomez is obviously not doing that. But when you pare it down this drastically, I don't know how many people she was following before. Do we have data on that? I have no idea. I don't, I don't pay that close attention. I am not one of Selena Gomez's, like, she used to, 30, she 132 million followers. She unfollowed 279 accounts. Okay, so she was only following just over 300 people before. So I'm guessing it was a lot of, a lot of other celebrities and maybe some more fan accounts. What makes, I'm curious, the, you know, the criteria that she... I think it's Put to up. promote an upcoming album because I think Selena Gomez is set up to have a really great album. She went through a lot in her life last year, and I think if Selena gets with the right producers and the right writers like and Dr. everything, Luke. like maybe not Dr. Luke, <laughs> um, Harvey, Harvey Wine, definitely not <laughs> <Weinstein>. that. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> not at all, but I do think that there's a chance that she could like be set up to make a really, really great pop album. I don't think there's like if she can embody everything that she's gone through, I think she would be good. She should hook up with here we go. Here we go. The door is opened. She should hook up with Jack Antonoff, the guy who did all the writing and producing for Taylor Swift and for Lord. I mean the do- like Or I does said- she get with Bieber and Skrillex? Oh. Ooh. Which I think is a good possibility. Especially if they're back together. And Bieber is allegedly making well, some music too right now. If you're going to do that, stop it with the, the implicit disrespect and just follow the boy on Instagram. Okay? Like, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know whether you're hooking up with your friends, friends with benefits, with your boyfriend or girlfriend. I don't care. At this stage in your lives, you should be following each other. When, when you're on TMZ all the time together... You, you should be following each other on Instagram. I don't know how much more playing I can make it. Why would you not be? What's the game you're playing here? Well, I asked the question before, which maybe we'll, we'll run a poll in just a little bit here. We got a poll currently going. Um, but are you supposed to follow your significant other on social media? Yeah, I asked should. the question before, like, do you have Excuse to like me. all their posts? And no. I got the no. And I said, well, what type of supporting, liking relationship are you? If you like your significant other, you should like their post. I mean, I don't really agree with what I, I say, but I had to take the world. opposite side there. Um, but anyways, uh, if you're dating somebody, you should already be friends on Facebook, following on Instagram, following on Twitter. But why? Snapchat. Why be friends? Buddies. Why, why wouldn't if – you, if you like them enough to establish a romantic relationship with them – you should already be connected on the most basic level of human connection, which is social media. Well, some would say I'm that's friends. not the base. That's more like – some would say there's more emotions put into your online uh, your online persona than you are in your physical one when you meet up with somebody. Yeah, those people are dopes. You should – like don't – no. That's – if you're putting more effort – into crafting your online persona than you are, into bettering your life, becoming a better person and contributing to this, the rich culture of planet Earth, then you're doing it wrong. And um, I'm not afraid to call you out on it, you idiot. Do you think uh, Chris Brown is really putting out positive things toward the rich culture of Earth, <sighs> Earth to try to make things better and everything? Because Chris Brown... He's just gone too far this time around. So allegedly he's painted like a mural of a search warrant and affidavit of like when the whole Rihanna incident, when he beat Rihanna, he posted that. Like, he, on, he, what do you do here? On Please his Instagram, <clears throat> he posted a full wall, like his whole wall size, basically reproduction of his search warrant and affidavit from when he assaulted Rihanna in 2009, just before the Grammys. Now, something like this, I, I would not be surprised at all if Chris Brown was – super proud of like look at this my first search warrant you know like how businesses hang up their first yeah. dollar on on their wall um but it actually it looks like he's using it as kind of a, a turning point like a motivational like you know i'm better than this now the caption says writings on the wall my first search warrant nine years later i'm humble yeah okay grateful inspired and most of all i'm a man now interesting um and in front of the search warrants like obscuring like half of the picture of the warrant itself. I is think a, he might also took down the picture. He, <laughs> it's he, not there. He may, may very well have. Um, I haven't checked in a while, but uh, there was a, a big sketch of Batman standing there looking like like he looked like he looked very upset about this search warrant. So what I gathered from that was that Chris Brown kind of thinks of himself as a Batman villain. Like Batman's coming after him for beating up Rihanna nine years ago is damn Bill you're on one the past couple of days <laughs> you are like the wokest of all woken all woken I, ability if anybody would have a Batman villain complex it would be somebody like Chris Brown who like does bad things and then we're like well let's just give him a chance to reform he just keeps doing bad things and he posts a picture of a search warrant from when he beat somebody up from when he beat up his girlfriend in 2009 like that's something to be proud of do you think he's addicted to uh, being in trouble and 
like you know just having negative light. The controversy, on him. yeah. The drama, yeah. I think he is. Is he more addicted to controversy than Ed Sheeran is addicted to? Oh, up? talk about being on one. These segues, they are so smooth. If I didn't know they were segues, I wouldn't know they were segues. This is some real life behind. And you would never even know That's that right. they're segues if we didn't call <laughs> out our segues out. because we're so damn proud of our segues. <laughs> That's true art. That's better than ah! you of a freaking search warrant and frankly my dear i don't give a damn that's I got your search warrant. For there we go okay, okay that's good. so ed sheeran <laughs> is like i think he's in love with heinz ketchup heinz specifically not just ketchup this guy he's got the heinz ketchup logo tattooed here on his left bicep and apparently it's gotten to the point where he has members of his entourage bring a special bottle of Heinz ketchup to everywhere he goes in case his dining establishment wow. does not serve that particular brand. The quote... I didn't know that there was other brands, and I'm trying to look up other uh, brands. I actually, I did that this oh, morning. Did? I, Googled, okay. I was like, well, what are, wait, what are the other brands? <laughs> the, only, the only recognizable one is Hunt's. So there's okay, Hunt's and right. Heinz, and everything else is just kind of like store brands. Like yeah. Trader Joe's has their own, like Whole Foods has their own. Um, but those are the two that you would probably so think So basically, of. this whole thing is saying that Ed Sheeran is a is still like a 12-year-old that loves eating chicken nuggets like 24-7 and just dipping them in like uh, ketchup. They're or putting their ketchup on top of everything. Like all the little kids in my family, they like freaking love ketchup. They put it on like anything they can put it on. They dip everything in ketchup. It's so... They were over my house for the holidays and the smell of ketchup. I'm, I, I'm <laughs> disgusted by it. It's like went through like 80 bottles of ketchup, like three bottles a day. Like these kids are insane. I think you're right about him being, uh, I don't want to say like a giant kid because it sounds disrespectful, but like he does, he has, he has down to earth basic taste. Cause I remember reading his tour rider from last year was like the big thing he requested was like a jar of honey for his throat and like, like some, some kind of soda. Like that was it. It wasn't like these big expensive requests. He was like, yeah, I want, I just want some soda and some honey. I think like some peanut butter or something like that. I'm surprised it didn't have Heinz ketchup on it. Um, I like, I like this quote from the, the source. Uh, he has made it, oh no, sorry. He has run out of patience with going to places that don't serve it. So he's made it a duty of key members of his entourage to carry a bottle wherever he goes. It makes it almost sound like a diva move. It like, is. ah, I have no patience for, uh, what? See. What's this? It's not Heinz ketchup. <laughs> Blow. Where's, my, where's my Heinz ketchup? Mm. But maybe, I don't think he has like a, like Come a here, where's my Heinz ketchup? Where's me bloody eyes? Yeah, there it is. My bloody eyes, you blow. No, I don't think it's that. I feel like Ed Sheeran is too chill of a dude to like. And I think that's actually maybe why he does Until it. Until like, you give him the wrong type of ketchup. Well, no, he brings his own so he doesn't have to be upset like and be like ordering off the menu. Like, no, no, bring me some Heinz. Like, you know, you get these the, the true divas out there. Like the, your, your Beyonce's of the world, your Mariah Carey's who would go. Taylor and if, Swiss. And if they don't have Heinz ketchup, they'd be like. Get me some Heinz ketchup. But Ed Sheeran, being a man of the people, brings his own with him. I respect that. So hats off to you, Ed. Wow, top of the morning, Ed. And <laughs> top of the morning. Okay. And so they're gonna they're doing away with all the bad auditions of American Idol. Which <sighs> honestly, I think the bad auditions brought some of the best moments from oh, American Idol. Easy. If you look back, it's like so outside of like Kelly Clarkson, honestly. How many huge stars have came from America? Well, Let's Carrie count. Underwood. Carrie Underwood. Uh, Kelly Clarkson. Scotty McCreary. <laughs> no, that's, that's that, like, like saying Ruben Stutter. Ru oh, ooh. Dang. Or Ruben like Clay Stutter Aiken or the something like that. I think yeah. Scotty McCreary is a bigger name than, than Ruben Stutter. <laughs> yeah, but he's like the same level of name as Ruben Stutter was when Ruben came out. Okay. That makes um, sense. Yeah, no, I, I was joking. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I was like, come he on. He was now. like pretty recent. So, I, was like, I mean, like, what? Well, you got Adam Lambert, sort of. Um, you know, like, like, guys that haven't been relevant for a long time. Like, let's just be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, well, who, who else was it? Jennifer Hudson? She's doing things. Jordan, kind of. Was Jordan Sparks on American Idol? Uh, she might have been. But... I think she was. But again, these are like not a tier. Who's actually putting out music? Right. Carrie Kelly and Clarkson and Carrie Underwood are the two. So, well, anyways, they're and like. Taylor Hicks. And other than that, but I mean, I can think of like looking like, like a fool with your pants on. The General ground. Larry Platt. You know that what was I mean? His There's name. so many great. William movies. Hung. He's they, like the quintessential bad audition. There's because two he put bad out stars. albums. 
two bad stars that go with their two main stars. So they put out just as bad as the good. So let's continue with the bad auditions. Are you are you ready for another moment, another stay woke moment? Yeah, I'm gonna prep you here because here's what here's the thing. I'm gonna read you the statement from the showrunner that says why they do. She says it doesn't feel comfortable to put borderline unstable people up on stage and laugh at them. We want the humor, but we don't want the exploitation. So, okay, a it sounds like they're gonna have more novelty acts in there. Maybe some people like the people on America's Got Talent. I already know why they're doing it. But the reason why, it's they want to make it sound like they're doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. Like, oh, we, we don't want to exploit these people. We don't want to make fun of them. No, that's not why. The reason why they're not doing it is because everybody knows now how many levels of audition you have to go through before you get on TV. Back in the day, when nobody knew about that, it was just like, oh my god, these people think that they're so good, and they're just, they're so bad. How could they think they're so good? That's because there's like seven auditions before you even get to the TV judges, and they've gone through all of these with people passing them on and telling them that they're good, so for the purpose of us laughing at them. And because we all know about that now, they don't want to paint themselves in that light. There we go. I feel like Basically, I'm, they're they're afraid of being called bullies. Yeah, right. That's that's less of a conspiracy theory and probably more of just like a. I can't say it's a, an explicit <sighs> fact, but you know, pushing somebody every now and then or getting pushed helps build character. Yeah, because when it comes to pushes, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm going to say that as many <laughs> times as I can for the rest of my life. All right. So with that being said, um. That's it for today's cubicle oh, show. We gotta but hit we with the poll. do have a poll yeah. currently running at Jams963 on Twitter. So Sean McMaster, you know him from the B95.5 Breakfast Club. He's over there. Over there. We call him Tall Sean. We call him Tall, Tall Sean. Well, Sean was saying he, he would like us to change his name. And he was uh, petitioning for the name Handsome Sean. And we're like, well, we're happy to oblige with calling you uh, Handsome Sean. But that's not up to us. It's up to the, the people. people. So if you go to at Jams963 on Twitter, you can vote right now on what um, we should call Sean McMaster. I want to call him Tall Sean right now, but we, right. we can't hasn't call him been that decided. right now. So we do you have decide. to still call him. We'll hit you with the results tomorrow and give him his official cubicle show name. And as of right now, 83% of people say that we should call him Tall Sean. Oh, dang. It's down. It was 100% percent It was 100 I wonder who's the 70. dissenter. We still have 23 hours and 33 minutes to go. Get your votes in at Jams963. You're, you're not pushing the good nickname enough. Go ahead. Sell your name. <laughs> no, sell I'm it. Just, I'm just saying. I can't. I can't. You can. All, no, you can. It was your long. idea. I haven't, I haven't shaved in six weeks. My hair's too long. I can't do it. He's a handsome guy. I'm just saying. Underneath guys, that ruffian guys, scruff. I can hear it in your voice. You're like... Just make sure you say tall Sean. Oh, tall Sean. You're not going to change the way we're doing things. Am so. I, would I be lying if I said I didn't want to call you tall Sean? Yes. <laughs> yes. We exactly. do like calling you I tall like Sean. Tall we Sean. like tall Sean. It's, so there you go. It's already ruined. But no, but we, if the people say handsome Sean, we will, we, we will, we will, it will be handsome We are Sean. duty bound. I'll see if I can get my mom online. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right, so with that being said, Monday through Thursday, 1030 Eastern Time. Because that's the only time zone that matters. We'll see you tomorrow. Adios. One. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show! That's what I'm talking about, boy. Bill has got cubicle show. Yeah? Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah! Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah? Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> we just got one.